Good morning, everyone, and welcome to part three of the trailer build. So today's gonna be all about destruction. I really wanna do a tip test. So right now with the stock wheels and tires, I'm gonna jack it up and just see how far I can get it before it tips or hopefully I won't actually tip it, but I'll get it really close to the tipping point. I'm gonna measure it, I'm gonna figure out the angle, and then when I get the new wheels and tires, and adjust the suspension and all that stuff. We'll compare it and see, hopefully, if we've improved that angle. Okay, here we go. Sliding. Am I hitting that front jack? That's the problem, huh? Okay, something just... Oh, shoot, here we go, here we go. Hey, that worked out all right. <laughs> I hope, I hope it was at least entertaining. Uh. So after using an online triangle calculator is all I did, uh, basically that tip over point was about 30 degrees. I don't know if that's good or bad, but we're gonna compare it to the tip over angle once I get the new wheels and tires. I think they're gonna be a little bit wider. They're also taller, so it might just offset, but I'm hoping with them being wider, it's gonna improve that tip over angle, so. We'll see. Step two for this video, I'm really curious how much this trailer weighs. The trailer is all hooked up and ready to take to the weigh station. I am super, super curious how much this thing weighs, so I'm pretty excited to get this done today. I want to come, can I come with you, Uncle Ryan? Tyler, I would love it if you came with us. You are always welcome to come, buddy. All right, here we go. I'm so curious. So Ben predicted 500 pounds, I predicted 600. We'll see what it is. First leg. Truck number? Uh, no truck number, it's just personal. All right, gotcha. What do you think, Ben? What's your what's your final guess? 500, around 500. So Ben and I were super close. The total weight of the trailer is 580 pounds. That's pretty dang high. Um, the four-wheeler max towing capacity is like 830 or something. So 580 is getting up there, but I think with cutting weight out, I think it's gonna work. I think we can do it. Now that we actually went and weighed the trailer, I can start cutting stuff off. I'm really excited to see how much we're gonna be able to remove. So the first thing to do is just start on this assembly. Basically everything I put back on, now I'm gonna have to take off. My plan is, nope, sorry, to basically cut from here up to there, leave a little triangle for strength, but I still wanna cut off most of this weight. But I think it'll be good to have these posts for stability for the whole thing because this back piece isn't real stable. That worked really well, so 
Just do the same thing on the other side and look at that. Oh man, that's a bunch of more weight off of this thing. Check it out, we got the new trailer rims, the new ATV tires. Those are gonna look a whole lot better on there. First thing we need to do is get these rims powder coated black. Doesn't that look better? Got the tire mounted up, looks pretty sweet. Just for reference, there's what the trailer looks like before, and here's how it looks after. That is pretty sweet. Now it looks like an off-road trailer. All right, we are gonna weigh these tires and see how much weight we've added with the new tires. So 25.8 pounds, oh geez. I don't even wanna know what the new ones are gonna be. That's definitely heavier, you guys. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. 42, oh, that's not good. Almost 20, 18 pounds heavier. Oh, I should have gotten aluminum rims. Total, we're down, what was the other one? Like 80 pounds plus about 24 pounds. So we're down over 100 pounds, but we're gaining 18 pounds per tire and rim. Uh, so what is that, 36? So we're still down. We're still down 64 pounds total. So that's pretty good. The tires, I'm at least not as concerned about because that's just like rolling weight or whatever they call it. And with my new four wheeler, if you haven't seen it yet, go check out my review video. Uh, I doubled the size of my engine. So I'm really, really not concerned about weight too much anymore. Um, that being said, I'm gonna keep it as light as possible. All right, so I got the axle disassembled there. Now I'm gonna disassemble this leaf spring. The trailer carried a three cylinder diesel engine. Diesel engines are super heavy. So this setup was meant for a way, way heavier load, which is why it was so bouncy off-road. So um, I'm gonna leave the one long leaf spring and I'm gonna go ahead and leave this smaller uh, bottom one just for a little extra support. So this was pretty easy. Just bent this up like so. Yeah. that under and Bob's your uncle. Look at that. <clears throat> Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. All right, so for this bolt, basically I'm gonna use the, uh, I'm gonna use these vice grips like so. Squeeze them on there. And then this is a, is that a half inch nut? Yeah, half inch nut on there. And I sprayed some penetrating oil on and it should be pretty easy. So a little tip, just cause, uh, I don't know, maybe you guys haven't ever run across this before. I've got this piece of conduit and it's basically just like a leverage bar, breaker bar. Um, so because that was so stuck on, rusted and stuff, you just put the breaker bar on and then came loose. So here's that bolt that was holding the leaf springs together. I'm not sure why they do it like this. I guess they don't want us taking it apart, but just use a pair of vice grips and some penetrating oil and you're good to go. The springs are removed. I got all of the hardware in here. I got some rust remover from AutoZone. We'll see how it works. It's definitely doing something in there. I mean, it absolutely bubbling and stuff, so. Well, we're about 15 minutes in and can't even see through the liquid anymore. So I think it's doing pretty good. So I really wanted to powder coat the springs, but I'm painting them with this enamel paint. You know, it's not gonna hold up as well as powder would, but it'll be good enough. And they'll look nice and fresh, which is good. All right, look at that literal rust that just poured out with it. So this stuff definitely works. The, it's Rust-Oleum, rust remover, or rust something. This is a bolt all wired, wheeled, nice and clean. Big, big difference. Look at that, you guys. They just came out of the oven and they're looking real good, guys. Real good. This part, you definitely want to be careful so you don't bump any of the powder off. The nice thing about powder coating though is if you do mess it up, 
you just grab the air compressor and blow the powder off and restart. I actually really, really prefer powder coating over painting. It's, it's really a simpler process. I mean, it can be a little more finicky, um, but the fact that you just, you know, the prep is, is similar um, to painting. You know, you want a nice clean surface, um, but with powder coating, you just spray on the powder, put it in the oven, it cures and it's done. It's super simple. All right, time to pull these guys out. They should be nice and shiny. So total, like I said, that's probably about 25 minutes. Oh yeah, baby, look at those. Beautiful. So to finish up part three today, I'd really like to get the suspension put back on the trailer. And in order to do that, I need to clean it up. I'm gonna put an undercoating on the bottom side before I reattach the suspension. All right, here goes the first coating of the Raptor undercoat. Ooh, this stuff is nice. Next step is going to be to reassemble the suspension, the springs. So put those there and put that one there. And then just, uh, there we go. And then we're going to take this guy, bring it over here and, you know, just hook it up like so. It's all hooked up. Got the nice uh, powder coated hardware there. The one on the other side's done too. Easy peasy. All right guys, it is time to get part three finished up. Unfortunately, the shocks didn't come in, so we're not gonna be able to finish up the suspension today, but I do have Dan here. He's gonna help me out and we're gonna be able to... Dan? Okay, so <laughs> apparently it's just me. We're gonna get the tongue shortened up and I got my fully articulating hitch in today. So this is gonna get bolted up right here. Should just be able to, ah ha ha ha, got it. There it is, world's biggest snap ring. So now this should just slide right off. Bada bing. Love to get a lighter one, or at least a new one that's not all rusty. So for cutting this off, I'm literally doing the exact same thing I did in part one. I marked some lines, I'm gonna cut it off with the grinder. We're just losing about an additional 10 inches. I think it's gonna be just about the perfect length. Part of good, Wayne. All right, it's all cleaned up. Time to hit it with some primer and some paint. And now let's go put it all back together. All right, I'm gonna start working on the axle. Um, I already popped this cover off with the flathead screwdriver. I just got it under the little lip there and pried it up all the way around. Bada bing. There goes the bearing. All right, well, get the other side apart and then we'll just start cleaning this whole thing up. I wanna show you what I'm working with here. There's so much just gunk built up, especially up here right next to where the hubs mount. So this is what I'm working with. I'm just trying to get all this crap cleaned off and make it as close to new as possible. It's gonna be, I think, a very, very satisfying transformation. A little update here. Um, if you hear anyone in the background, that's Dan because he's filming in the office. It's got it cleaned up pretty good. I really am enjoying this transformation, so. Next, we're gonna prime it and paint it. Just in case the question comes up, I did clean out the bearings and I'm packing them with grease. So don't worry, all that's happening. It's seriously gonna be like a brand new trailer. What a difference. Pretty much looks like a brand new axle, you guys. Could not be happier. So 
So the springs are already hooked up. I'm gonna reattach the axle with only one difference. The lower shock mounts came in today and they are perfectly fitted to those holes. So they'll just be able to mount right up there. Let me get this hooked up and show you guys what it looks like. All right. Should've got the nuts, but let me bring you guys a little bit closer and you can see what I'm doing here. We've got the U-bolt up through the new shock mount. I don't know if you guys remember part one, I was taking all this stuff apart and it was so rusty and nasty. And this is like, man, this is like a brand new trailer now. I am super stoked with how all this is turning out. All right, with that done, it's time to install the new wheels and tires, which are gonna look awesome. touching the trailer. We're gonna need wheel spacers. <laughs> well guys, this is it. This is the very last step for part three and then we're done. I'm really excited about how far we've come with this project, you guys. I found the absolute lightest weight jack that I could find. It's like uh, 10 or 12 pounds, I think. have accomplished a lot in part three. So completely redoing the suspension and the axle, sprayed the entire bottom with that rubberized undercoating, shortened and painted the tongue, put on the new articulating coupler, put on the new jack stand just now, did the tires and wheels, did a bunch of powder coating and did a bunch of disassembly and cutting down weight which is all over here. We got a bunch of junk over here. I am super excited with how much we've gotten done and what's coming up in the next episode. The shocks finally came in. Um, that's gonna be the first thing we do is get those mounted up. I could do it now, but I really wanna get part three out to you guys. So I'm gonna get into my office. I'm gonna start editing and we're gonna get this finished up. And then right away, I am going to get working on part four, get the whole trailer build completely finished. And then part five, we're gonna go out and we're gonna test it in the real world, which I am super excited about.